Good morning. I'm gonna start a little bit early today. I got a journey I need to go on in a while. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we have worship at nine o'clock in Sutton and at 10.30 in McHenry. Uh, the nine o'clock will be live as it always is from Mabel and Sutton and invite you to join us for worship that way as well. Today, we look at Luke 13, verses one through 22. And in this well, it starts out with, uh, you know, people asking Jesus about sin and about the severity of sin or, you know, if there's, you know, different levels, maybe I should say, of sin. You know, at the very present time, there were some present who told him, Jesus, about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with sacrifices and asks, had they sinned? Uh, did, did, did this happen because they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? And uh, and it's been one of those thoughts, you know, for years. I mean, in Old Testament times, it was, you know, the the bad things that happened to people were were God's punishment from sin. And you know. Not so long ago, we we read about the, the man who was born blind, and people said, who sinned, this man or his parents, that this happened to him? And, you know, so for, and even yet today, you know, we we still kind of toss people into that category of, of worse sinners, you know, because of how they live or what they do or how they talk or whatever it might be. And, you know, and... and uh, so they are asking Jesus about that group of Galileans who had 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 died, and then their blood was was mixed. And then this other, you know, eighteen who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell. Do, were they worse offenders than others living in Jerusalem? And it's no, Jesus says. But I tell you, unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. And and again, that word perish is there. And, and to me, that word perish means to cease to exist. And when we believe in Jesus and believe we have life eternal, we won't perish. And that's what, you know, John three sixteen you know, will not perish is what, you know, it says there. And, um, but it's, Jesus is calling people to be aware and to repent. And that was John the Baptist a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And and um, we often begin our worship service, especially on a communion Sunday, with with uh, repenting and asking God to forgive our sins. And, um, and we, we, we need to open ourselves up that way to God. And, um, and then the, the parable of the fig tree. And when, when I read this earlier, I read... A man had a big tree planted. You know, instead of reading fig, I got big out of it. For you know, my eyeballs sometimes don't really. You know, you, you think on one thing, but the fig tree that had been there three years and hadn't produced any fruit yet, and um, we've got apple trees in our backyard, and and you know, when you first plant them, they're they're small and it, they they need they need years to get the root system. Uh, developed enough so that so that the tree can bear that fruit and this fig tree had been there for three years that said and had not yet borne any figs and um you know get rid of it cut it down and but the gardener said let me take care of it you know let me you know give it some more fertilizer let me dig around it that means you know to cut the roots a little bit give it a little bit of a shock and and you know, then it'll you know, then let's see what happens next year. And 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 I think that's you know, kind of the same with with us people. You know, we sometimes look at at people and you know they're you know kind of good for nothing there. You know, they're whatever. But you know, and, but you know, we got to give them a chance. We, we can't we can't write them off. And and so often we find that happening. And. Um, you know, to give somebody a chance to to give them forgiveness, to give them grace, to give them room to grow, and and all of that, and you know, we don't hear what happened to that fig tree, but it's just, you know, we you know, if it bears fruit, well and good, and if not, 
then cut it down. And that's, you know, if it's never too late for somebody to, to come to God. And I had a conversation with a, a, a young man and he was, you know, well, I don't know for sure if grandpa was a believer or not, but you know, and well, and I reassured him that I had had several good conversations about faith with his grandpa. And, and you know, his, his grandpa knew Jesus as Lord and Savior. And, um, you know, I think he felt a little bit better after that. But, but he, had, he had told me that, you know, there wasn't anything that he could do about it by worrying about it, but just to trust that his grandpa was in God's hands anyway, you know, and... And, you know, it was between his grandpa and God. And, and that's what it is. And and so we need to make sure that, you know, we don't ever count anybody out for anything. That we, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt and encourage them in their faith. Show them, you know, our, our faith by how we live. And to, you know, to to not, you know, be afraid of this dying that's going to come. But... And not to embrace it, and not to you know hurry it along or anything that way either. But you know to be content with who we are and, and to know that we are gods. The next part of us is starting at verse ten. He was again teaching in the sa- in the sa- synagogue on a Sabbath, and there appeared a woman that had been crippled for eighteen years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. And and I've seen people that you know are like that and i'm sure that many of you too have have witnessed that you know that you know their 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 body gets uh aged and you know different things set in with their back and you know and they get crippled and they you know they can't even lift their heads to look up and stuff and and this was this woman her her posture had been diminished by greatly that way and and it says, when Jesus saw her, he called her and said, woman, you are set free. Nobody spoke to him on behalf of this woman. The woman didn't seek Jesus out. Jesus saw her, invited her over, and healed her of her infirmities. And, and it's, it's just a, a sign for us. I mean, God knows our condition. God knows our sin. God knows our need for him. And and God is willing to act for us. He sent Jesus to die on the cross even when we don't know how to ask. And that's, you know, uh, you know we, in, um, Paul writes, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with words too deep, with sighs too deep for words to express. You know, when we don't know what to say, you know, God already knows. And so here, you know, he's, Jesus saw this woman, and that's such an important thing too, the, the seeing, the, the seeing the woman and knowing her need and acting. And, and again, it's an invitation for us to be aware of what's going on in our community. And when we see a need, you know, to do something about it. We are God's hands and feet. And of course, after this happened, the Pharisees are excited. There are six days on which work should be done. Come on those days, but not on the Sabbath. You know, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. <laughs> you know and, it, and Jesus says all the time, you know, he said, well, why don't we do the Lord's work, especially on the Sabbath, you know, to do it every day. And um, he says, ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, you know, so he... He says, you know, she is a child of God, and Satan has been has bound her, and you know, but this woman was bound by a physical deformity that they could see. How many of these religious leaders and how many people in today's society are blinded by thinking they're better, by thinking they know better, by thinking they're not as big as sinners, by whatever? You know, we all need God's grace and God's glory. Uh, the last couple things in today's lesson are the, you know, the the mustard seed and, and yeast, you know, and, and the mustard seed grows into a great bush and yeast impacts everything that it is mixed into. And, and this is the word of God. This yeast, this, this mustard seed blooms and grows within us to so that we know uh, our need for God and, 
and the yeast. God's word is, is, is out there for the world. And you and I might be little pieces of that yeast. And we are to um, have an impact on those that we meet and encounter every day. And um, it's just a reminder for us that, you know, it's the small things that, that can mean a lot to somebody else. And, and so to be watching out and to be aware, and, and like with Jesus seeing the woman, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the world and, and look for the needs of others and act on it. And that's what God would have us do.